Um, yeah. So, uh, reminder, class presentation. So there's several of you who still did not tell me when you're presenting. Um, I don't know who's here. So Emily, Christian, Kira, Michael, Anthony, you said Thursday. I have a lot of Thursdays. So if somebody wants to switch, Damon, I'm going to switch you to Tuesday because you told me you would. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, Omar, Levi, Stephanie. So again, class presentations are on your element. Um, Tuesday during this time or Thursday. So if you are presenting Thursday because you're like, I want to procrastinate. Sorry, that's what's going on, right? Um, you don't come Tuesday. You can come to my office hours to ask questions. You do have a study set on what I'm going to go over do next Tuesday. Um, all the answers are on the study set, but you can come during my office hours uh, if you have specific questions and you'll have a quiz. Um, there is a lab this week, so there's no class Thursday. Um, the lab is already posted. My other class, we did this lecture last night, and they actually left class at 8 o'clock, and then somebody came back at 8.30 and had already done the lab. She went, it's a 17-minute video. It is where I do the, the lab, you just watch and write down the data, and then you crunch the numbers. And I will tell you, I did not get 100%. Um, and so you have to analyze how I did. It, it is extremely pure, but it's definitely, I lost some. All right. Um, so there is the study set that's for next week. And um, there will be an extra quiz that shows up that is on moles. So we're going back, we're doing moles again, which you guys did great with the moles. So now we're putting moles with equations. Um, there is an extra quiz that is going to show up. I think it's in the week 10 folder. Um, and I would encourage all of you to do it. Um, I'm going to make it as extra credit. So, um, yeah, just do it. It will give you more practice with this. You don't have it's I will open the week 10 folder, but kind of keep in mind. Um, and a reminder, do your extra do the extra gratitude that I posted for you to do. So you can giggle for a week. You can do gratitude. If you're doing a healthy November, that that will be, you won't post that till next week. That will be 30 days. Um, so that's extra credit. And there's an extra quiz. So a couple of people had asked me, oh, wow, that second celebration hurt me. There's the, the healthy November, you either did it 30 days ago or you were like, oh, no, I don't have to do extra credit. But you have a chance this week to do a week of gratitude. Each one you do, you get more bonus points. So um, you can do all of them. And by the end of seven days, you'll feel amazing. And then there'll be an extra credit quiz um, that you can all do. Um, and it will just be free points added on. So if you have a low quiz, that will make up for it. And it will make up also if you had other things that were low. All right. And your class presentations. Um, do, a, do an amazing job. Don't sit here and read to us. Um, so you're going to have to have a visual. You're going to be sharing your screen. So I would ask that you be here 10 minutes early instead of all of you. If you come 10 minutes late, you're not going to get full points. Um, so if you can come 10 minutes early so you can see how to share your screen, some of you know how to do it, you want some kind of visual. So a slideshow. Uh, you just have to have it open on your computer, and when you share your screen, you pick the slideshow, and we're all basically watching your computer. Um, it doesn't need to be long. It's like five minutes, so like three, five, seven slides. It really depends. Um, not a lot of words. We like pictures and you talking. Um, conversational. Talk to us. Um, talk with us. It's like like you're all in my living room right now. Actually, you're in my little small bedroom right now. Um, and so we'll be in yours. And so you're inviting us in there and tell us about your element. So if you did sodium, tell us about sodium. What's so cool about it? Um, yeah, and so have fun. Uh, you can ask questions to us. 
So you can, I've had people do a game show. So they were like the host of the game show. And again, you're gonna have your video on. Uh, you'll be muted except for when you're doing your talk. And I'm not gonna be recording. So don't worry about that. Um, and you will be writing comments for each other. And then at the end of your presentation, you will be asking questions to each other. So I'm gonna pick on Damon for a minute just because he's really good at asking questions or answering my questions. Um, so you'll all have to at least ask, I think, two people questions. And again, right now, the Tuesday is a smaller group. Um, so if you, there's still like six of you who haven't told me when you're presenting. And this is next week. The papers are due by Saturday. They just need to be three solid pages. So three to five pages. I put an upper limit on it. And you do need references. So you need to find at least, there's, it's so two to three websites um, that talk about your element. If you don't like your element, if you start looking into it on Friday, because you're so excited because the Steelers beat your team. I don't even know who they're playing. I, my dad's from Pittsburgh, so I grew up as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And my son and I are finding it hysterical that they're undefeated. But anyway, if you're not a Steelers fan, you decide Thursday night, you want to start your research, and you're like, oh, this, this would be a much better element, send me an email and say, can I switch my element to this? And I will let you know. Somebody switched last night, which is fine. And somebody will switch Monday right before their Tuesday presentation. It happens every time, and that's perfectly fine. If you're not enthusiastic, then we're not going to find your presentation enthusiastic. So have fun with it. You can dress up. That, that would be fun. I, I would love for you all to get a full 50 points. So I will tell you, I had a student last year, um, and he didn't. And then he emailed me, and he's like, why didn't I get full credit? And his presentation was like, hi. Yeah. So I did my presentation on Argon. And it's really cool. It's a gas. It's a noble gas. If you're gonna be that person, yeah. So let, let's have more effort. Um, all right. And yeah, you guys can do it. Um, it's something other than having to do all the math and the calculations. And it will only be half the class here. So it'll be like 10 or 12 people in the group. Um, all right. So let's do stoichiometry. Um, and again, if you have a question, I have an office hours tonight, or you can email me or stay after for a moment or two. So combustion, we're going to practice writing equations also. Combustion, this is sugar, like the sugar that everybody puts in all their pies and all that stuff. Um, combustion means we're going to end up with CO2 and H2O. You got it. All right. So combustion always means plus oxygen. Um, and our body would actually break this down into combustion. Yeah, if you burn sugar, it smells terrible. It's known as the stinky sugar demo. But uh, you're going to get 12 CO2s because all the carbons become CO2s. You're going to get 11 H2Os. Um, so 11 times 2, and then these 11 oxygens balance those 11 oxygens, so we're going to need 12 here. Um, all right, so the math. This is the new piece, but really, we've done this. So the, the key piece to doing this is that we're doing the railroad tracks. You guys were great with the math because I made you do that lab. And so some of you are going to take a deep breath and say, you know, uh, that reaction lab is more than I thought. I might have to come to her office hours and have her walk through some of them with me. There were a couple of people who did, and they did great on it. Um, write down where you're going, which is 
grams of water. Let's write it here. And it's chemistry. There's a mole on the page. You are going to change your grams to moles. So this is where we add up all the numbers from the periodic table that there's 12 carbons times this number. And just for the sake of time to show you this, it comes out around 342. Now, the key to getting this is you label more than just grams and moles. So when we did this before, I allowed you to just say grams and moles. With this, you have to label always which piece you're working with. So there's always two units. You're changing one at a time. So when grams and moles with the periodic table, it is one mole. And then we do a mole to mole ratio. That is what stoichiometry means, is a mole to mole ratio using the balance equation. That is what the koi fish are. This is one. So we want to not just say mole and mole. We want to say what type of mole. This is a sugar mole. Uh, and this, I'm going to the H2O, and I know that because I wrote down where I'm going. In my balanced equation, this step comes from the balanced equation. These are the coefficients, or the koi fish, which is easier to spell and say. I'm not sure I ever spell that right. Um, that step is our middle step on all of these. It's our common theme, we just keep doing it. Um, and so I see students just, this clicks, everything starts clicking. They even get the balancing reactions better because they see where we're going with it, which was to do the math. Um, and so we're just bringing back moles and we just have this step. Um, label everything with two units. So we're still keeping moles and we're changing what type of moles uh, and then this is why back <clears throat> when we did some, some people asked, can I go straight from this to this without the moles? And I would kind of hesitate and say, well, you can, but later on, well, we're at the later on, we need the mole to mole step. Uh, when you add up the water, you get like 18.016. You punch this in and you should get around my answer. I don't know why I have a question mark there. I must have last year not known what my answer was right. Um, you can go between any two things in the equation. You can go from the sugar to the water. We can go from the sugar to the CO2, which is our next question. You can go from the CO2 back to the oxygen. You can go between the CO2 and the water. Any two pieces you can go between. Um, the unfortunate thing on my notes that we're doing today is I always go from a reactant to a product and someone decides you can only do that. That's not true. All right. So we're going to do the same thing. 3.581 grams. C12, H22, O11. I don't have a secret stash of chocolate. Well, that's not true. I don't have a secret stash of Dove chocolate, and so I haven't shared that with you. Um, I, I had to stop doing that because other people I work with who had keys to my stockpile room uh, started knowing where it was, and they would eat all the chocolate. And then there's also now lots of mice at the campus. What's really fun is when I go to lab and I have to turn on the water, the color that comes out of there since nobody's there um, is quite fascinating. We are going to solve for molecules of CO2. So what famous number are we going to get to use? Anybody? Avogadro's number? It is Avogadro's number. All right, our first step, we do our grams, just label. So grams to moles, it's the same as up above. Oops, yeah. And then I pull the unit down. So pull the unit, not the number. You guys are great at this. And then if you write down where you're going, you know, okay, so this is my mole to mole step. Every single one of these problems has a mole to mole step smack in the middle. 
And then you take a deep breath, you look at your equation, and you pull your koi fish down. So 12 koi fish to one koi fish. And now I pull this num this unit down. The 12 only shows up once in the mole to mole step. It is an exact number, so it does not affect sig figs. When you go between grams and moles, it's always one mole. When you go from moles to Avogadro's number, same way remember it. 6.022 times 10 to the positive 23. Bring back a vague memory. So there we go. You would get my answer here. Uh, this should have four sig figs so that we can have four. Avogadro's number has four sig figs. We have a huge exponent. And there we have it. All right, we're going to do two variations on the theme. And so you can read about what happens to your left socks. I had a talk with my gnomes, and they came to lab with me, so they didn't take any left socks. So there's one piece of information. So it's a question several of you will ask me. I don't know where to start. Get a highlighter. I, I try to highlight them. I didn't on this. Um, and that's our starting point. So kilograms of NaOH. Again, this is where I have the solid gas aqueous, so you can ignore that. And we're solving for kilograms of sodium sulfate. So give yourself space. Uh, sodium sulfate, Na2SO4. All right, write down where you're going. On this one, do the first step together. We do have to get to grams. Our beautiful periodic table is grams per mole. All right, so kilogram to grams is 1,000 or 10 to 3 grams per kilogram. Now that step you can crunch in there, and now you're going to have grams of NaOH, and you'll go to moles. So I am going to pause for like two minutes, give you a chance to try it. I will go over how to do B. So if you're super fast, go ahead and try number three. Or if you're not sure, at least add up your numbers. So I'm going to pause our video. Got to do it right. All right, I'm going to resume recording. So grams to mole. If you have a hang of it, keep going. Kind of have me listening in the background. And we add up the numbers. So you can go with 40. Or you can be very precise and say it's 39.998. Um, we're going to be limited to three sig figs. <coughs> so if you're doing the periodic table with three sig figs, 40.0. Right, and then our mole to mole step. This is what stoichiometry is. So the NaOH pulls to the bottom. And if you write down where you're going, that's your moles on top. So again, the key is not to slack. Everything always has two units, so grams of NaOH, moles of NaOH. This step is from our balanced equation. So I have four NaOHs and two Na2SO4s. So the question that usually comes up here, can I reduce that? You could. Please listen to my words. Um, and some of you will, and that's fine. I don't. Because, uh, one, for teaching, I want to make sure you understand these come from the balanced equation. So this step, the mole-to-mole -mole step, it's when you use the balanced equation, it's the only step for the balanced equation. And in your calculator, you would just punch in 2 divided by 4. I also do not reduce because what I find for most students when they reduce they reduce it wrong, and they end up writing two over one. They know it goes to one half, but they end up writing it backwards. So I recommend you actually write it how it is in the equation. And then if you want to reduce, you can put a slash and put a one and a two. But it's just as easy to punch it in as two over four in your calculator. All right, when you go to grams, it is always one mole 
to your grams. And again, the key is labeling fully. The students who label fully actually cruise through this and finish in half the time. The students who get sloppy and just want to say grams and moles, they get lost and then they have to think more. And at this point in the term, thinking less is often a good thing. All right, and we would then, that gets us to grams. You would then go back to kilograms and you get my number, 65.5. Um, depending how you're rounding on the periodic table, you might get 65.4. We're, as this last digit might vary a little bit, that's fine. Uh, so when you're doing the study set and you're looking at my answers, um, yeah, I've used that study set for multiple years. So uh, unless I typed in the answer wrong, which is possible. So if you can't get to an answer, you can send me an email. I do have office hours on Saturday morning um, and then Tuesday. I'll have them before and after the presentations. And the presentations might not take the full two hours, but um, plan on it. Let's just say that. All right, for this step, there is, this is, this is in the lab uh, step you have to do. Uh, this is the formula, actual over theoretic times 100 equals your percent. It's always talking about the product and the actual is from the experiment. So when you watch me in the lab, um, that will be the actual number at the very end at like 16 minutes on the scale that I think I have to say, cause I don't think you can see the scale very well. I'm not a professional photographer, that's for sure. Um, that will be your actual. In this question, I give it to you, 52.3. So that's in our numerator. The theoretic, that's the calculated. That is the railroad tracks. That's this number. So this is T. So we usually just write it as A over T equals percent. That's the shorthand way of writing it. Because I'll say show the formula and you can just write it A over T equals percent. So that's the 65.5. Um, theoretically, when you watch me in the lab, theoretically, if I did everything perfect, I would get this math. But you will see in the lab, I'm anything but perfect and I'm okay with that. And so I sure as heck did not do as well as this person did. So you always lose some. Um, and I point out where I lose some, and I'm actually really impressed the students usually do much better than I do. Um, there's lots of places you always lose some. The actual should be less than the theoretic. Um, the times 100 is a personal preference. I personally don't write it because I just punch it in, but um, some of you, it has to do with your fourth grade teacher who taught you again the fraction decimal percent thing. So um, I just move my decimal in my head. So it's up to you if you write the times 100. Another quick comment with this, percents have sig figs. So this is wonderful because I'm videotaping myself because there's always a rumor that percents do not have sig figs. They do. Everything in our problem, we started with three, our actual has three, our percent has three. Um, and again, if you get 79.9, that's fine. That has to do with the rounding on the periodic table. So around 80%, which is phenomenal. And I will tell you the truth. In the aspirin lab, if, if a student ever gets 80%, I know that they didn't dry their aspirin. So if the sample's wet, um, the, the aspirin is really like kind of sticky. It sticks to everything. And um, so you end up losing quite a bit throughout, especially if you have gnomes in the lab helping you. All right, on the next one, iron three oxide is this one. Write down your starting. There's this one place to start. And it wants to just know how many grams of iron. So we're just solving for grams of iron. 
and you add up the numbers from your periodic table. Wow. Um, so 159. I again recommend four sig figs. We have four here, so using the periodic table with four and label everything. The excitement for me is usually I my shoulder falls off at this lecture because I'm writing up on the board. Um, so it is a lot of writing. And in this format, my shoulder is very nice and relaxed. All right, I pull the mole down. Do notice when I'm writing it, I always just write my units. By the time we get through this, by the time you do the lab and the study set, you, you've got this. You have this for life. This this ends up being, for those of you taking 221, the first half of the term is pretty much reviewing what we did in 151 uh, with some extra detail, like adding states of matter in and things like that. Um, so there's a little bit more depth that we put in. We do more polyatomics, um, but you end up in really good place. All right, if there is no koi fish, that means the number is one and there is a two. The only thing I'm going to warn you, and I'll say this at the beginning of 221, is students start slacking because they become overconfident. Um, and then the last three weeks is like all new stuff in 221. And, and so don't, don't slack. We have two weeks to go. End strong. You guys can all end strong. We have a lot of points out there because of the presentations. There's a lot of extra credit opportunities, so just do them. And those of you who have been doing the healthy change for November, that's awesome. I am so proud of you. And yeah. All right, we punch it in, we get my number here. This is the theoretic, so the 86.31. That's my theoretic amount of iron if everything works perfect. So actual over theoretic times are 100. Again, that's up to you if you show the times 100 equals the percent. So the A is my unknown this time. I know the theoretic. That is what the calculation number means. Times 100 equals this time I gave you the percent. So again, they did pretty good. So you're going to have to divide by the 100. And then multiply by the 86.31. It's just algebra rearranging to solve for the actual. Um, you get this. For those of you who are really good with percents, you can leave the 100 out and move your place value over. That also works. Um, any questions? That's percent yield. You'll either be given the percent or the actual. The theoretic was what you calculate. All right. So last piece. The advantage you guys have today is I did this whole thing last night, and so um, I know what I'm doing today. Uh, so I, I had to ponder what the some more guy was in the upper corner last night uh, and what it had to do with this page, but I do know now. Um, so I don't know if you've ever made a s'more, but you make it with marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers. So you go to the campfire, and you have a whole bag of marshmallows. Great. So you have like 52 marshmallows. And you have a whole box of graham crackers. Maybe you ate one, so you still have 49 graham crackers. And then you go to get the chocolate. You roast your marshmallow, you put it on the graham cracker, and you look for the chocolate. And if your teacher was along, or most other people, they've eaten half of the chocolate, and you only have one piece of chocolate left. So it doesn't matter how many marshmallows you had or how much graham crackers you have. What limits how many s'mores you can make is how much chocolate there is. So that one piece of chocolate is your limiting reactant. So that's the idea that one of the reactants is always going to limit you. And that is also in the aspirin lab. So the aspirin lab is actually a really fun lab for you to get to do. Again, I apologize. Um, 
nothing I can do about it. We'll see next term. Maybe maybe I'll be able to convince or sneak people in to lab by then. Um, yeah, you're going to recognize it. We're going to do two of these. This ends up being everybody's sweet, sweet, sweet spot um, because students get it. If you do it my way, <laughs> if you do it YouTube's way, you know, God bless you. Um, I don't know what you'll get. It's, it's been really fun grading some things that people do some things in ways I, I don't know what they're teaching you on YouTube. Um, all right. So if you have two places to start, how you recognize it is you have two places to start. Two places or, or numbers to start. Meaning I give you the amount of each reactant. That's an N. So we write down the amount of zinc, labeling it that's zinc. And then it's why you're given lots of space. We're going to write down the amount of silver nitrate. How do you solve? You solve twice. This is the Sherpa method. This is the best method. There's probably eight ways I can do this. This requires the least amount of thinking. You just solve twice. What are we solving for? Well, it told us here, grams of silver. So you solve for the same thing twice. And then I will show you what we're going to do. So you change the zinc to the silver. Gram to mole, mole to mole, mole to gram, then you do the silver nitrate to the silver. The issue some students have, they're like, well, what about the zinc nitrate? It, I didn't do anything with that. So don't worry. It's very kind. You're so kind to the zinc nitrate. The zinc is there to give us the balanced equation, but it's not going to be in the math. In fact, on this side, we left out lots of stuff in our math. So you're solving for the same thing twice. So I'm going to pause. Go ahead and try it. And if you're really speedy, you can do this one twice. Um, so I'm going to pause while you try. All right. I'm going to go ahead and walk through this. Um, again, there are other ways to do it. Um, I'm picking the way that requires the least amount of thinking and allows this and that the students are always successful who just do it this way. Um, the other ways require more thinking and more explanation. All right, zinc. By the way, zinc is a sacrificial element. That's what this guy who wrote the elements book um, calls it because zinc goes through oxidation so easily, so they always put it on the anode with the steel, and so the um, it preserves the steel from going through oxidative damage. The zinc gets oxidized first, so like on submarines and stuff. Anyway, that's something I learned last night. All right, write your mole-to-mole -mole ratio. If you always write down where you're going, then that will help. This goes down, and we're going to zinc, and then put in your numbers, the koi fish. This two only shows up, the balanced equation step only shows up there. And then we go back to one mole of silver. And silver is 107.9 grams. And you get a number. And the number is 7.334. All right, and then do it again with the silver nitrate. Um, right, I'm limited to four sig figs because of my silver and zinc masses. And then here I'm going to have two moles of silver nitrate 
to two moles of silver. I recommend you show it as the two and two, or else you'll write one of the twos and not the other. And then if you want, you can cross them out. Um, just because I want you all to get this and to get them all right and to get full points. The last step is the same. Yes, you are redoing the last step, but um, it makes actually for less work in the long run. You get two answers. So is there questions up to that point? So at this point, you're going to do an X and an O. So you're going to kiss the larger number goodbye. Or if you're a football fan, and then you're going to hug, circle the smaller. You guys can't see anything I'm writing. Sorry. So we're going to kiss that number goodbye. It is wrong. And we're going to circle this number. This is why I have boxes in your study set and the quizzes uh, when we do math, because you have to put the right number in there. We are not going to do anything with this. If you don't cross it off, you're going to want to do something with it. Um, so don't scribble it out. I want to still be able to see it. Cross it out. This is my answer. That's why it was my answer here. You're going to be then asked, this is called the limiting reactant, the silver and nitrate. So there it has, and then this is called the excess reactant. Let's get all the words out. What happens when you get to 2.117 grams of silver? The reaction stops. It's over because there's no more silver nitrate. It's all reacted. It limited the reaction like my one piece of chocolate in my s'more. You cannot make it to 7.334 grams unless you add more silver nitrate which we're not going to do. So the silver nitrate, whatever gave you the smaller number is your limiting reactant. Whatever is the one you're kissing goodbye, there is excess left of it. This labeling will help you. That's what you're putting those blank, the blank spot there. Because it wants to know how much is left over. Your limiting reactant, so I'm going to call this the LR. Your limiting reactant is always zero grams left. That's what it means to be the limiting reactant. And so that's why I have, this was my limiting reactant, zero. This is always gonna have a bigger box because there's two answers. So what we're trying to figure out is how many grams of zinc. Um, there's multiple ways you can do this. The easiest thing for most students is start with your answer the 2.117. And now we're going to work back to the zinc. So you're basically working backwards and crissing, crossing, crissy crossing over. That's a new word. Um, so you're working backwards from where we were, but crisscrossing. This is why you have to cross that number out. You cannot subtract these. This number doesn't exist. It's an imaginary number. You can't do anything with it. All right, so the silver gram to mole then we pull our unit down and this is the key, really, the key to doing this is two units, and the other piece is writing down where you're going. Um, especially here, because it did not say point blank, what am I solving for? It just said each reactant. So the limiting reactant to silver nitrate, we've eliminated. Um, so now we're solving for zinc. It's still the same equation, one mole of zinc for two moles of silver, and then the 65.39. This is always our periodic table step. And we punch it in, and we're going to get a number. 
so 0 0.6414 grams. This is not the answer. That's why you get a lot of space. Your teacher's writing really big. This is how much reacted. To make 2.117 grams of silver, 0 0.6414 grams of zinc reacted. My question wants to know how much is left. So you're going to subtract from our starting point. So 2.222222 grams of zinc. This is our initial or our starting amount minus the reacted amount will give me 1.5808 grams of zinc are left. Um, to get this, this is probably the most missed point, um, like on the midterm and on the quiz and stuff, to get the full credit, you have to label. So your initial or your starting minus your reacted equals leftover. So most students just put numbers and they subtract and get an answer and you're like, good, I got the answer. You need to show me you understand what you're subtracting. So the initial amount minus the reacted amount gives you the amount that's left over. This number and this number are what goes in your box. But for me, that was the answer there. Um, questions. So I'm going to pause again for five minutes to give you a chance to try these. This is a note to myself to remind you. So the aspirin lab should be able to do it. Um, yeah, it's you have to watch the video. I forgot to write that in the lab that please watch the video. Um, and so the video is there as today's videos will be. Go ahead and try that last one. So let's do it. So I need my. So we add up the calcium nitrate. Should get around 164.1 grams to one mole. And again, if you're stuck, um, just take a deep breath and come to my office hours. If, you, if you're lucky, you get to be alone. I don't know that you would be today um, or Saturday morning or just email me what your question is with kindness and gratitude. All right, uh, I have one there and I'm wanting to go to the calcium fluoride. You always show the mole to mole step even if it's just a one to one. Uh, and then one mole calcium fluoride and 78.08 gram. I'm used to being at the board, that gives me the 10.6. Then I do the same with the sodium fluoride. Which is around 42. So three sig figs because we started with three. Uh, and once more, I sound like a broken record, just label everything fully. So we have two moles, don't just say two moles, two moles sodium fluoride and one mole calcium fluoride. So we just keep doing the same thing. And it's these limiting reactants, these problems that you start seeing the pattern. Um, and then one mole, the last step is the same. Uh, and this time we get 31.0 grams. So you're going to cross one of them out. This is my excess. The sodium fluoride, there is some left over. So that is what my question is down here is how many grams of sodium fluoride do we have left? This is my limiting, the calcium nitrate. So I know I have zero grams 
of calcium nitrate left. And then this 10.6, that is the answer. That is the only number that will go in the box for that part. I often will ask with a blank, I'm pretty sure I do on the study set, uh, what is the limiting reactant? So you would tell me the calcium nitrate. Uh, the 10.6, by the way, that is the theoretic yield. The actual yield we'd have to either be given or in the experiment, like in the video. All right, how much is left over? We already figured out the calcium nitrate, so we're done with that. So we take our answer from above, 10.6 grams of the calcium fluoride, and we're going to solve for the excess. So you're working backwards and crisscrossing. So we already did all the stuff with the periodic table. So half of the work is done for you. Just label fully. Don't just say grams and moles. So one mole of calcium fluoride to two moles of sodium fluoride to know what goes on top and the bottom. It's all the units. So that they cancel. Right, and then one mole of sodium fluoride is 41.99 ish grams, and we punch it in. This is not our answer. You should get around 11.40 grams. This is how much sodium fluoride reacted. To make 10.6 grams of calcium fluoride, this is how much reacted. To figure out how much is left, we go back and take that original number, the 33.3 grams of sodium fluoride to start or initial. We subtract this and we should get our 21.9 grams. Oh yeah, I couldn't have that zero. Uh, sodium fluoride is left. That number is the only number with the zero that will go in the box at the end. Uh, a quick comment on sig figs, the factor label, it's just what you start with. You're gonna be limited to no more than, um, well here with three, our periodic table, we could have had four. Avogadro's number limits you to four. Uh, when you add and subtract, it's the place values. So that's why on this one up here, um, because my answer had four, but I started with five or six, I guess six twos. Um, I actually can end up with five sig figs because it's the place value. That's like a small piece of it all. So any questions? There's no questions. The aspirin lab is due Saturday. Uh, you could probably do it today. Um, I have office hours this evening. I have office hours Saturday morning. Next week is class presentations. You do have a study set and a quiz on this. Um, so you can do those and get them over with. I'll, I'll open the quiz earlier. So if you have questions. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Again, there's the extra credit gratitude. So if you want to do it, start it today. Um, do like multiple activities. And again, you can't double dip. So if you're already doing the meditation for the month for that bonus in the healthy November, then pick two other activities and get a friend involved. And have fun getting your class presentation together. And I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm going to stop recording and I will hang out